Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, today, welcome to Grant's Game Room, uh, episode 16, I think, today is Tuesday, November 21st, 2017, and today we are going to be looking at Old School Tactical, Volume 2 from Flying Pig Games, that's right, Mark Walker's uh, second volume in his Old School Tactical series, this is, takes on the West Front, 1944 to 1945. So we'll be reviewing this. First, a little bit of housekeeping. If you're enjoying these reviews, please go below, click the subscribe, the like button, the share button, and uh, be sure to share this with your gaming friends so we can get more people on board for these reviews. Um, we do the reviews every Tuesday currently, um, and we do Grant's Game News, which catches you up on a whole week of gaming news uh, from around the gaming world. Predominantly war games, but I talk about everything if it's, it's game news. We got Black Friday coming up. I'll be doing an episode this coming up Friday, which is the 24th, 25th um, of November. Uh, just a quick heads up. Mark Walker, Flying Pig Games, has just launched at 12 noon today. Um, Platoon Commander Kursk on Kickstarter. So if you're enjoying these games and want to get a little more uh, detail, he goes to Platoon Commander Kursk um, with his newest game on Kickstarter. Get it, get it now. Um, it'll make a, you know, it's a great Christmas gift. I doubt if it'll be in before then. However, you know, you can put that slip in there saying, hey, as soon as it comes in, uh, you'll be getting it for Christmas and uh, you get the great discount on it out there so please make sure you go out support mark and flying pig games um with with their new kickstarter campaign so with that being said let's get on to the components and then uh, after showing the components i'll show a little bit of gameplay and give you uh, what i think of uh old school tactical here west front okay first off i gotta put on my glasses but a uh, beautiful box this is a a good size box you can see it's about Two inches thick, two and a half, maybe even three inches thick here, uh, ten inches long. And there is a big reason for this. Nice, sturdy box. This is a good game box. You're not going to have any problem with your components on any of this. Um, I've read through the rules. I haven't played it yet. However, you get four dice, two black, two white, six-sided standard. Hmm. You get a deck of cards, and haha, <laughs> you get to watch me eat plastic. Um, the deck of cards is really cool, and I, I want to implement this into some of our upcoming games, possibly. Um, you get some luck cards that are give random occurrences, and these are good, good sturdy, thick cards. You can draw one of these before uh, the scenario starts, and you can play it at any time. Uh, artillery strike, fortune favors a bowl, die rolled modifier, uh, a strafe run. But what I really, 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 really found cool, it's a small, small set of deck luck cards. And these are good quality rounded corner card poker size. Um, but for each unit in the game, you get a card with detailed information on firepower, movement, uh, for your armored vehicles, it's got the range, the hit numbers, um, with uh, the infantry. This is what I really like. It's got um, special information. This is a, a second line infantry squad, um, poor quality unit, minus one to melee, minus one to rally, firepower, things like that. Uh, but just a really great idea by Mark. You know, if you've got some squads in front of you, you can lay these out and, and keep track of everything going on. So Mark, great idea on these. It's something with the units at least. I know, uh, I think I'm going to try and talk uh, Mike into implementing. Old School Tactical Rulebook. Um, the rules are 22, 23, 24 pages long with a... Uh, cover um, it threw me a little bit the organization um, however once because what he goes into are, are the units 
and information on everything, but there's a reason he did it. And once I figured that out, it totally made sense because you're getting information on terrain and things like that. And then it goes into the sequence and, <coughs> sorry, still fighting off this cold, the uh, impulses and how to use vehicles and all. Um, great rule book. Lots of examples. Um, if I had one complaint, it's just not organized the way I'm used to, you know. Um, and it took me a, a, a little bit to wrap my head around, but once I got it, once you go through the turn sequence, it's no problem. This is, this is an easy game, actually, um, and not that complex. The scenario book I absolutely love. Um, it gives you the units, uh, tells you the map, because you get a huge map here, and um, with the... Um, you're only using certain parts of the map, but there is a lot of scenarios. Um, there are 16 scenarios and one, two, two, two bonus scenarios um, that take you throughout the West Front, Fubar, Ar Argentan, uh, Strauss, um, the Roar Pocket, the Roar, the Roar Pocket. Um, but well-organized scenario book, a lot of scenarios in there. It's going to take you a while to get through them all. Two good player A cards. Guys, uh, player A cards, you can't go wrong. Terrain chart, combat charts on the other side. Uh, very detailed and gives you all the information you need for this. Sequence of turn sequence. Um, tells you the different type of uh, weapons and vehicles. Again, haven't played it, but we are going to walk through some stuff here today. Um, beautiful counters. These are, are great counters, and I'm going to do some zoom-ins on these. Um, dark uh, green, and then on the black back, as the unit gets reduced, it goes to a uh, stripe or half uh, light green, half dark green. Um, big counters, rounded corners. This is something Mark's very good at. Um, the Germans are a, a light, lighter gray, but uh, very cool. Lots of markers, good markers, three sheets of counters. But here is what I absolutely love, and I think I showed you this before. Guys, I'm not going to roll this whole board. At, well, maybe I will, I'll try. But that is half the board there. And I'm trying not to tear it. But this board is a thing of beauty. Uh, if, if you're a, a crazy enough gamer, you could uh, frame this and hang it on a wall. It's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, big hexes. Ooh, don't break it. Um, and yes, there is a top panel here for this one. Um, but component-wise, this game's an A+, all the way around. Uh, um, it's... Uh, Good looking terrain, it looks natural, it looks like a battlefield. Um, all your charts and, 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 and terrain explanations on the side, everything you need to play the game is here. It's large, it's readable, um, and very, very functional, which is important with games like this. So, I'm gonna spin around to the opposite side of the camera, set up a couple situations as I've read them from the rules, and uh, we'll walk through a little bit of gameplay um, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts based on the rules and the components in the total package. Um, very cool box, though. Very cool box. He's got historical newspaper headlines from around the side there. So, coming around. Okay, a couple things to note here. I've gone handheld mode with the camera, so if I move around a bit much, it's just I'm trying to show some things. I've already played one scenario of this, the first scenario. I wanted to uh, put down a smaller scenario to show you all. So I played scenario one, played great, uh, some really cool things about this. One, guys, this counter tree is so beautiful. You can pop your counters out, and rather than using a tray or anything, you can pop them right back in. I, so this is beautiful. Um, with the turns, in the game, you started a turn and count backwards. On the last turn, on turn one, um, there's a chance that it could go one extra turn. You do a die roll to see if it goes one extra turn. Um, 
You keep track of impulse points. Everything is on the board. Uh, you keep casualty points too. And every five casualty points, you lose an impulse point on your impulse roll. And I'll explain that here in a sec. Mark has a compass rose on the board and a really cool feature. He's got this huge board, but you only play in sections at a time unless the scenario calls for the full thing. So he has this map edges that you put on the board. So right now, for scenario two, this board runs from here to the east edge. The Americans will be entering from the east edge, and you're trying to capture these control points and inflict casualty points on your opponent. Um, how you determine impulse points is each scenario tells you. So for the Americans, they roll 2d6. The Americans on this turn will get seven impulse points. So I take the one marker, I move it to seven. The Germans get 1d6 plus three. So they rolled a one plus three, they get four. So the Germans will get four impulse points, the Americans will get seven to bring their pieces on. Uh, this is a battle of um, seven American infantry squads with two BARs, uh, two sergeants and a lieutenant coming on board from the east edge. And for the Germans, they get a lieutenant, oh, and I grabbed a captain, but a, a sergeant, two light machine guns, and you know them MG42s do bad damage in most games, um, and five rifle squads. Um, you can see some of the terrain, the bocage, the uh, wood buildings, a little stone building there, and you're fighting for control of these buildings along here, some walls and orchards and but mainly the because you've got to work your way through um so this is scenario two it's june 11th 1944 it's called into the fog approaching emily emily france um so we're going to pause it again for a sec i'm going to get myself situated and we'll start a little show you a little bit of play okay a little explanation on the units uh, this is a, a leader unit, but this is a rifle unit. The number in black to the far left is the unit's firepower. There's a small white six adjacent to that, which is the unit's maximum range. The number immediately in the center, the black four, is its defense, and that's its movement. When the unit gets flipped to its reduced side, it has an R on it. That's its reduced firepower. Now, you can attach weapons and leaders. The one is the leader's command range. It has a four defense and a four movement. This light machine gun is attached to this infantry squad. You can have two squads and a hex, any number of leaders, and one attached weapon per squad. So, this light machine gun can be fired separately as a two, or it can be combined with the infantry four here for a total of six during its combat phase. Uh, now, it could still only go a maximum of, of six if it was going to be combined because that is a infantry unit's maximum range. Um, movement is four. Let's see, just going over some other things. I wanted to make sure we're clear. Um, as units can do two actions in a turn. We showed the impulse points. Every time uh, a unit performs an action, such as move, its impulse point is reduced. If you have two squads in a hex with a leader for two impulse points, they could move together. Um, a squad can move once in a turn, or it can fire and move, two actions, and you have markers that you use to mark the units as moved and fired. Um, a unit can fire twice in a turn, however, as separate actions. There are uh, actions that are considered free actions, rally, spotting attempts, and there's one other. I think smoke is a free attempt. Um, the, that's the basics of the system. So you roll to determine initiative to start the game. Germans rolled a nine. Americans roll to eight, the Germans will go first. Now, because the Germans have the lower impulse points, they can pass until the two sides get equal, at which point they can no longer pass. They have to perform an impulse 
and then the two sides alternate impulses. Um, to start the game, each side draws a luck card, and we'll just draw one. I don't want to draw from the top because I haven't shuffled these very really well. So we'll go down one, and we'll give the Germans one. They're there. <coughs> There's there. They can play this at any time. Chaos in the battle leads to confusion in enemy ranks. At the start of a turn, mark a single enemy unit is used. And here's the allied card. At the start of a turn, designate any single unit. The unit's base defense number is modified by plus two over the course of the turn. So that's pretty cool because what that means is, say the Germans held their card and pinned an American or marked an American unit is used so he couldn't be moved during the turn. Well, the Americans, if he's smart, is going to play this one because you've got a vulnerable unit sitting out there that would add two to the unit's defense, making this American squad go from a four to a six on defense. Um, you see the objective hexes. Victory in this scenario is who has the... Um, the highest total of victory and enemy casualty points. So if the Germans cause 10 casualty points to the Americans and control two uh, victory locations, say these two here, then they would have 12 points if the Americans scored um, five and, and had one, the Americans would only have six, so they would lose. Um, pretty simple. Um, we're gonna push forward and, and play this one out and I'll let you know what I think and I may turn you on and show you combat because movement's very simple it's like any other game you have terrain calls because um, like to to we'll, we'll spend an impulse point here and we're uh, Captain Frederick we're just gonna leave him in um, he's gonna move with this infantry squad who has four movement points and they're moving across um, Let's see, this is farm terrain, and it cost one, so we'll go one, two. The Bacage cost two, plus the cost of terrain. So he spent two. To go into here would cost five. He can't do that. We'll go three, four. We would put a, so the movement here was one, two, three, four. We would put a moved marker on him, and I will grab a moved marker. Moved. He moved, he really, really moved. Do, 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 He moved, and then you put it up. You rotate the marker around, he's moved. If he'd fired, you'd have flipped it to the fired side, and then once he's done two actions, you'd flip it to the U side, showing he can't do anything else. So, we knocked the Germans down an impulse point. The Americans want to get their squads onto the board. We're going to bring our BAR, which doesn't add a ton of firepower to this American unit, but he's going to go one, three, four, and we're going to be pushing hard for that one, that first train condition. So anyway, you can see it's, it's standard movement. There's no great trick to any of these games in that regard. So we're going to pause for a sec. I'm going to push through the battle some, and we'll see what goes on. Okay, we're going to show a fire combat here between the German unit and this objective hex and good old Sergeant Wishick trying to push an infantry squad uh, across the uh, open here. That's within the range of the German um, machine gun and rifle squad that are located there. So it's within six axes. What you do is it's pretty simple and, and it's beautiful in its simplicity. You add the firepower here, the firepower here, that gives me a six. You get a plus one modifier for having an attached leader. Okay, so that gives me seven. I subtract the defense factor here, four. Sorry, my battery almost died. Um, you take, you're firing at the single unit in the hex, and so we're firing at the four infantry here. So seven minus four is three. We go to the combat chart. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to move slowly. And you have a differential of three. You roll 2d6 and cross-reference the result. What did we get? 
Where's my other dice? Seven. So we cross-reference seven on the die roll, on the three, and it comes up with a C. Uh, on a C, let me see what the result. The C is casualties, which flips the unit to its reduced side. And you have to do um, checks. So that gives you a little idea on how simple and beautiful combat is in this game. Um, if the unit suffers casualties, it's flipped over to the reduced side. And, oh, I forgot, you got to add a casualty point for the German player. Um, it, uh, if it's a reduced unit, it's moved off the board. So it, it's just that simple. I enjoy the idea of keeping track of casualties. Um, you score them for different things such as hits on tanks, crews, uh, you have leaders for tanks. Mark Walker has covered it all in this game and, and very well done. Um, there's a lot of games out here on the tactical series. I'm going to finish this up, flip it around, and give you my final thoughts on at least the infantry combat portion of this. Okay, all I can talk from is in the infantry combat side of this, but looking at it and playing it, this game's a winner. Um, there's a lot of different tactical games out there right now. Let's face it, they all started with squad leader and advanced squad leader. Um, you now have lock and load uh, publishing's uh, game. I think that was originally designed by Mark. Um, you've got Academy Games, um, Awakening the Bear and, and, and Storm of Steel, um, both brilliant designs. Uh, Columbia is coming out with their combat infantry using blocks. Worthington, us, we have a band of brothers. There is this now, old school tactical. It is the heyday for tactical gaming. If you want to refight World War II, um, even Vietnam, Lock and Load Publishing has their Vietnam. Mark Walker has his 65. Um, guys, there is not a better time to be alive and be a tactical war gamer than right this minute. This is a brilliant system. Um, I've played Uva's Awakening the Bear. Brilliant system. I think ours is a brilliant system. Um, they all seem to be borrowing and 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 taking different pieces from each other and weaving them the, the best of each other. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the titles I've mentioned. Um, th this threw me a little bit, figuring out the rules organization, but once I got it, like I said, it was no problem. There is a great player age. You can go to BoardGameGeek.com, pull up Old School Tactical West Front and Old School Tactical East Front, um, and there's a four-page player aid that walks you through. Um, I used it immensely. It helped me, and then I just referred to the rules. This game's a breeze. Once you got it, you got it. This is, this is easy to play and really, really a good game. Mark, great job. Uh, the components are absolutely gorgeous. The pieces are gorgeous. Uh, the card's innovative. You've, you've always done that well. That's something... Uh, we don't use, although I may suggest that we uh, do these uh, unit counter cards similar to this for our upcoming Band of Brothers. I like the idea of that. Um, just a lot here and a lot to keep you coming back. It's um, enough variation even in the scenarios with the turn may or may not end. Um, the variable impulse points, you never know. You're rolling through dice to see how many impulse points you get. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of variety, a lot of good stuff here. This is a really good game. If you don't have it, I recommend you get it. Christmas is coming up. Put this under somebody's tree. Um, you know, the uh, I think uh, currently it's Black Friday coming up. Mark's got, a, I think, a holiday sale on Flying Pigs. Um, so you can uh, maybe get old school East Front. He's got a great Stalingrad map out there if you can get hold of that. But guys, with that being said, today and this holiday weekend, play a game. Go out and play a game. And teach somebody a game. You're going to have family. You're going to have kids over. Teach a kid a game. Teach them how to play. I could teach this to my granddaughter. 
or my nephews that are coming over. Uh, you want to play a game. Teach a game, but most of all, happy game. And have a great Thanksgiving from us here at Worthington Publishing. Uh, be looking for me this Friday, Black Friday, if you ain't out shopping. Come in and watch my game news. Um, and also, go out and check out Mark Walker's Flying Pig Games, uh, Platoon Commander Cursed on Kickstarter currently. Happy gaming!